Justice Secretary Steve Reid is here with me. Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, so, what do, is your reaction to the news that more than 100 schools in England will have to close some buildings because of this uh, concrete that looks like it could be liable to collapse? What do you make of it? Well, it's shocking. And if you think how angry, furious parents are going to be to find out just days before the start of term that their child's school has to close and they don't necessarily have a place to go and get an education at the end of the summer holidays, Families will be exhausted after all the disruption those young people have experienced through the pandemic, through the strikes as well. Now here's yet another problem of uh, facing their children's education thanks to the, frankly, the incompetence and the neglect of government ministers. The government say they're the only country that's actually proactively seeking information about buildings that have used RAC, and they say that it's only last-minute information that's come to light that shows that some of these schools are vulnerable and they've acted straight away. I think they're being a little less than frank, to put it politely, um, in what they're saying this morning, because we know, and so do government ministers, that five years ago, in 2018, there was a school in Gravesend in North Kent that collapsed because it had this kind of concrete in. Now, if you... You, I, you can't think of a starker warning about the danger and risks this concrete po poses than a school that collapsed. Thank God it happened at a weekend and not when children were in it. Now, since then, the government's had a report from the National Audit Office. They had a report from the Department for Education itself just last December telling them the situation was critical at that point. Now, he either read that and is being disingenuous or he didn't do his job uh, and look at that report. But also in the last two years, my colleague, uh, Bridget Philipson, who's the Shadow Secretary of State for Education, has raised this issue in questions and debates in Parliament over 150 times. So if they're telling you they didn't know this was a problem, they're not being truthful. And they should have taken action at the beginning of the summer holidays so that uh, measures were in place now to ensure those kids get an education, whether it's remote or in alternative buildings, not days before the start of term. That is neglect and it is incompetent. Well, they say they've already taken some action in, in around 50 schools, this, this work that's been going on, and the latest information has only come to light in the last a few days in some cases, they say. They and say. they also have, have sent out questionnaires and surveys to schools and they're waiting for the results of those to come back. Some of them have been slow to come back. They say they're doing all they can. They've had five years. H how have they not been pursuing this issue when they knew that a school collapsed five years ago? Now, what we're calling on, on them to do now is to publish a list of those schools that are affected. Parents don't know. Um, students don't know. Those of us that are looking at the education system don't know. We need the government to publish a list of all of those schools that are affected. And in fact, we'd like to see condition surveys on all of our schools, because if we don't understand the scale of the problem, then we can't see what remedial action needs to be put in place to sort it out. But there is no way a competent government would have allowed a situation uh, to develop where Days before the start of term, they're telling parents that there's no school for their kids to go to because they're not safe, when they've had five years to take action. And they should have started at the beginning of the school holidays, not at the very end of it. Uh, the schools minister, Nick Gibb, uh, when I spoke to him, w was keen to, to reassure people that the vast majority of schools are not affected. He said that it's important that people know uh, that schools are safe, uh, that... Uh, Child safety is their priority as well. They say they've been working on this in great detail. There'll be teams of people making sure that they minimise the disruption. Are you reassured at all about the action that's being taken now? Well, we know that Nick, Job, Nick Gibb hasn't been doing his job, otherwise they wouldn't be taking action days before the start of term that they should have taken at the beginning of the school holidays, if not five years ago, after that school in Gravesend collapsed. But it was Nick Gibb, who was the education minister, who took the decision, when the Conservatives came to power, to cancel Labour's school rebuilding programme that would have dealt with these problems over a much longer period of time through proper planned maintenance work and never put anything else in, in place for it instead. And the truth of it is, so much of our public estate is crumbling after 13 years of Conservative failure, uh, frankly. But you can't deliver first-rate education in second-rate buildings and you can't deliver any education in a building that collapses. How concerned are you for other public buildings? Well, we know it's not just schools. We see the same problem in hospitals. In my brief, which is justice, we see the problem in hospital, um, uh, in prisons, and we see it in courts as well. But what we don't know is the scale of the problem because the government won't tell us. I asked the government back in May about the situation in the courts and the, and the prisons, and they point blank refused to answer the question. So if the government won't be upfront and honest about what the problem is, how on earth can any of us know what needs to happen uh, to sort it out? But the government have that information. They should have taken early enough action so that we don't get left with this crisis. But after the long summer holidays, my heart goes out 
to those parents this morning who are wond wondering what is going to happen to their kids when school term starts. Uh, Nick Gibb um, said that he, f he felt for those the parents and pupils, but he said in cases where a child won't be able to go into the classroom and won't have that kind of face-to-face -face learning, it should be for a very short period of time. How great do you think the disruption could be to education? Well, I hope it's for a short period of time, but we don't even know how many schools are affected or the extent to which they're affected, and not even every school that is affected has been told, even though the Department for Education and the Education Ministers have that information. They should have been engaging months ago with head teachers uh, and the people responsible for running those schools to put in alternative provision. That is how you could have minimised the disruption, uh, given that the government hadn't acted for years when they knew this problem was coming. That is how you could have minimised the disruption. But for some reason, they chose to sit on their hands and do nothing, even though they had report after report after report telling them this was going to happen if they didn't act. They didn't act. This is a problem that has resulted because of the ineptitude and neglect of government ministers. What should the government do now? What would Labour do now in this situation? Well, what, well, first of all, you need to understand the scale of the problem so you can put in place a long-term plan. But short-term, there need to be conversations right now with head teachers that are uh, whose schools are affected to make sure that alternative provision is available. But what we're, what we're calling on the government to do is publish a list of the schools that are affected so parents can see, and let's have a condition survey on all schools across the country so that we can scrutinise what the government hasn't done and put pressure on them to make sure that we have world-class, first-class school buildings that can then del deliver world-class education. OK, Steve Reid, we appreciate Hi, the Schools Minister Nick Gibb. A very good morning to you. Thanks for coming in. Uh, so you've announced that a number of school buildings in England will have to close um, immediately over safety fears. Why has it taken until now when rack, this type of concrete that's mm. prone to collapse, has been known to be risky for many years? Why have you made the announcement now just days before the new school term is about to begin? Well, we've been very proactive in dealing with RAC since 2018. We've issued a warning notice to schools then with the local government association. We issued guidance in 2021 and 2022. And in 2022, we started a survey of all the schools uh, in the school, say 22,500 schools, asking whether they have RAC in the schools. Those surveys have been coming back. And the vast majority do not have RAC. And the, those that thought they had RAC, we sent in surveyors and to identify, to confirm whether they did. And again, the majority did not. And where we did identify it, we, we then took action if the RAC was critical. And that's been happening already in 2022, 2023. Uh, in 52 schools, we've already taken remedial action for those schools. What we discovered over the summer, as new evidence emerged, there were a number of cases where uh, in schools, but also in non-schools, and indeed outside England, uh, where RAC uh, that we thought was safe, that was not critical in its condition, actually turned out to be unsafe. Because of that emerging evidence over the summer, we've changed our guidance to school to say that it's no longer just RAC that's cr in a critical condition where you have to take that building or room out of use. We now take the cautious approach that if the RAC when you've identified RAC, regardless of its condition, you need to take that building uh, or, or room out of use. And that is a cautious approach in terms of safety. And the reason why we can take this decision, because this government, unlike any other government in the world, has more evidence of where RAC lies and remains in our school because of the work we've been doing over the last few years. You say it's recent new information, but there still will be a lot of people who are concerned about the timings. As you say, we've known about a, a, a collapse of a school was put down to rack in 2018, mm. five years ago. Mm -hmm. And then in June, the National Audit Office said that a, a school collapse in England that causes death or injury was very likely. Couldn't the summer months have been spent putting into action some of these relocations that's needed now? And Unison are saying that you've squandered valuable months. Are they right? No, they're not right, because the policy up until yesterday was that where we identify RAC, and we have been assiduous in identifying RAC in the school estate, where that RAC was in a critical condition, then we do take that action. And those measures have been taken already in 52 schools where we've taken uh, part of that school out of action, or indeed in a few cases, the whole school has been taken out of action and we have put in alternative accommodation for those schools. So that's already been happening in 52 schools. What we learned over the summer is that the policy that said that where the rack is identified as low risk, 
uh, you don't need to take remedial measures. What we've learned in the summer is that is no longer a safe attitude, and we are now taking the cautious approach that even where it's not critical, the condition of the rack, we still want those buildings taken out of use. How and many schools will have to... Sorry to interrupt. Yes. How many schools will have to close completely? Very, no, we don't know yet. We are talking to the schools. Caseworkers are attached to all those 156 schools to identify the extent to which rack is in the schools. In most cases, it will be just a few buildings or a few rooms, or indeed just a cupboard. Uh, but in some cases, it will be the whole school. And in those circumstances, we will be finding alternative accommodation for the pupils, uh, and they'll be out of uh, out of face-to-face -face education for a very short period while that alternative accommodation How is short period? Well, we, on average, in those 52 schools I was telling you about, uh, we found that on average it was about six days, but we want it to be even less than that because we are working with caseworkers with all the support of the department, property experts, propping experts. We, we may well be able to prop up some of these areas because it's not in, the, in a really bad condition, but we're just being very cautious. It may be possible to prop up the, uh, the rack so that the, the building can still be used. How many sco more schools could be affected? You have been carrying out surveys. Have those inspections been done? Have you got those surveys back? How great is the scale of this issue? Well, the vast majority of uh, the surveys have been returned and we have been following up with, with surveys. There's, there are more to come in, so there will be some more. But we, what we do know from those questionnaires is the vast majority confirm there's no rack. And even when they suspect rack, the majority actually do not have rack. And schools have had guidance in 2018, 21, 20, 22, showing that they do need to have contingency plans and explaining how to identify RAC in those schools. So they are aware of this issue already in our schools. But if you haven't had the, all those surveys back, is it possible there'll be some children going back to schools next week that are not safe? No, they, they, they can be safe. Look, we, have, we are in this country have taken a more proactive approach. But if, but if you haven't got all the information on all the schools But yet. we have more information than any country in the world about the school estate that uses RAC. We have more information than, for example, the Labour-run Welsh However, government, they who are starting their surveys today. So they, they can be assured that, they, that the schools are safe. The schools already know about the dangers of RAC. They are identifying it, they're aware of it. We are just being extra cautious and saying, that where you identify uh, RAC through the service, through our questionnaires, that we want you now to take those buildings out of use for precautionary reasons. And who is going to pay for that relocation? Is the money coming from directly from the Department for Education or will schools have to dig into their own budgets? No, we will, we will pay for that. We've made it very clear we will cover all capital costs. So if, in the worst case scenario, uh, we need porter cabins in the school estate for an alternative accommodation, we will cover all those costs. So there, there's been some speculation that we won't cover those costs. We absolutely will. OK, and uh, what about other educational settings like universities? and nurseries, is there a risk there? Well, we, we are responsible for state-run uh, nurseries and also for colleges, and we are doing the same approach to, to those as well as to schools. Universities are independent and um, they are aware of the, the technical issues of RAC and they will be taking their own advice. Right across uh, Whitehall, we are assiduously uh, surveying hospitals, courts, uh, uh, public buildings, so we know where RAC is and action is being taken right across the, the public sector. Well, yes, give me uh, an update on hospitals, because as I understand it, uh, the Cabinet Office has talked about 34 other public buildings have been found to have RAC, and they include 24 hospital sites. So mm. are hospitals safe? Yes, they are. Hospitals are very large buildings. They have very big and expert maintenance teams in those uh, hospitals. They can use propping, and they are using propping, uh, in certain circumstances, they can move patients from one ward to another. It's a very different estate from the school estate. Uh, and, and there are seven uh, hospitals that we've already committed to rebuilding that we know have RAC, and those schools will be, those hospitals will be rebuilt under the new hospital programme. And as far as schools are concerned, why have you not released a list of the schools affected? We will do. Uh, but what, what, what we want to happen is we want, we are talking to the schools and the schools are talking to the parents. We want the school to be able to talk to the parents first before parents read about these issues in the media. We want the schools to concentrate on the mitigations and sorting out uh, what they're going to do, working with the department, with all the support that we're giving them with a the caseworker. We want the schools to concentrate on that, but we will release the list in due course. So have all the schools that are affected been informed now? Uh, the vast majority have. We've been calling them uh, yesterday, but there are a few more that we're calling today. And those uh, schools are now talking to parents about what's going to happen in their schools. In the, in the vast majority of cases, 
The rack will be in only a few buildings or a few rooms in the school, but in some cases it will be more extensive. And I have to let you go, but quickly, <laughs> a message to pupils and parents who are finding out, possibly as late as today, about a term starting on Monday that their child may not be able to attend school on Monday. I absolutely understand their frustrations, uh, but our priority has to be safety. We could have... This evidence could have emerged in, say, November coming up, in term time, and you just have to take the decision as quickly as you can, and, and, and then, of course, it's going to be short notice for the school because we inform them uh, as soon as we're able to do that. We've been uh, looking at the evidence, we have been questioning experts, we've been preparing uh, for the consequences of that decision so that schools will have the support to put in remedial action. Uh, and, uh, but as soon as that decision is taken, and indeed there were schools that, that, that evidence had emerged over the summer, at one of the school, one of the buildings, uh, we, we discovered as late as last week. So as soon as we are able to take a decision, we tell schools, uh, and, uh, and I do understand the frustration of parents, but safety has to be our prime concern. OK, well, Nick Gobe, Schools Minister, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.